schönen guten Morgen. Schönen guten Morgen und herzlich willkommen zur IT Security Cyber Lounge. Ich begrüße Sie ganz kurz auf Deutsch uh, and afterwards I switch to English to introduce all the experts that are on site now. Also schön, dass Sie da sind. Uh, herzlich willkommen zu unserem Online Format von LSZ. Mein Name ist Claudia Marx. Viele von Ihnen kennen uns ja schon und unser Team. Wir sind verantwortlich für die IT Security und die Talent Formate bei LSZ. Und wir bieten Ihnen bei unserer Security Cyber Lounge äh, wie immer die aktuellen Themen auch online, Community News, wir bringen Menschen zusammen und wir machen dies auch im Webinarformat sehr interaktiv. Sie haben auf der rechten Seite Ihres Bildschirms ein Bedienpanel, in dem Sie uns die ganze Zeit über Ihre Fragen schicken können. Die Experten von heute werden die Fragen zwischendurch aufnehmen oder auch nach dem Webinar und immer wieder beantworten. Die Fragen, die wir nicht schaffen zu beantworten, werden im Nachgang auf jeden Fall persönlich auch beantwortet werden. Die, das Webinar wird aufgezeichnet. Sie bekommen auch wie immer alle Unterlagen nach dem Webinar zugeschickt und auch die Aufzeichnung. So now I, I think to introduce you, I switch to English while well, my English is not that uh, good, so it's nice that I started in German. Uh, so the, today's topic is Dora and Nice 2. Uh, you're showing a live demo AI-driven assessment CISO platform. We are very happy to introduce you today to one of our brand new partners, it's Spirity, and I give the stage to Laura. Laura, you are the channel executive director at Spirity. Um, you're an economist. Uh, you have been previously working two years by Blue Voyant. Um, you have been director of Microsoft Alliance and Channels, and you have been developing the partner ecosystem in cybersecurity so for a long time. And you joined Spirity, I think, this year. And you will introduce yourself a bit more, and you will introduce your colleagues. And I wish you an interesting webinar. It's an interesting topic. So have fun, and see you at the end of the webinar again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Claudia, for the introduction. It was perfect. So uh, I just uh, would like to share a couple of more words about our team at Spirity. But first of all, first of all, because I'm going to be the first presenter today, uh, it's very nice to meet you all. Uh, about our team at Spirity, who we are present today, uh, Andrea Schleini, who is responsible for the sales activities in Germany and Austria as the vice president of sales, and Balaj Chendesh, who is responsible for the product and strategy as the vice president of these fields. Both of them will show you some very interesting slides and a live demonstration about our topic for today, the virtual CISO platform. And as Claudia mentioned, I'm very happy to be here as well with you as the channel director at Spirity. The next slide, please, Andrash, about our services portfolio. We have several years experience in business-focused cybersecurity technology with the market leader service providers. Our executives are coming from the client side, from the big telecommunications and insurance companies. And as I mentioned, our experts have been former workers of IBM and Blue Voyant, as, as me and, and, uh, and Balaj as well. In our portfolio, our main focus is on the following cybersecurity services, what uh, I would like to highlight. First of all, the Blue Voyant Managed Detection and Response for Microsoft Shem and uh, XDR, which combines consulting, implementation, and 24 by 7 security monitoring and management. The second one is the Blue Voyant Supply Chain Defense, which offers an end-to-end solution for third-party cyber risk management with, again, 24 by 7 monitoring, which is very important part. And uh, it uh, refers to the critical vendors in the vendor ecosystem. The next one is the Blue Voyant Digital Risk Protection, which monitors the external attack surface to protect against the web, the app, and the social media impersonation with a proactive detection and unlimited takedown of the phishing site. And our topic for today, finally, is uh, the Synami virtual CISO AI-driven cyber planning and management platform. Uh, with this product portfolio, with these automated end-to-end -end solutions, our aim is to help the European clients to enhance cybersecurity in all levels and to meet the requirements of the EU regulations as well. The next slide, please, Andres. 
Regarding the mentioned cybersecurity services, I also would like to emphasize that we are not only a simple reseller of the region, although the exclusive distributor of BlueVoyant and Synomy across EMEA. It's also worth to mention that BlueVoyant have been awarded as the Microsoft Security Partner of the Year in 2023 and in 2024 as well. And Synomy is among the 20 hottest AI software companies in 2024. And in the next slide, please. And the reason why we chose the virtual CISO topic from all of our services for today is because, as we know, nowadays there is a significant shortage of skilled cybersecurity professionals on the market. This talent gap makes it difficult for the CISOs to build and maintain a robust security team. This challenge is, of course, associated with the rapid pace of technological changes, which requires continuous learning and adaption to the new EU regulations, as Claudia also mentioned in the beginning, the, for example, the DORA and the NIST two regulations. Moreover, the CISOs also have to face difficulties of task delegation and budget cuts. And as a result of the previously mentioned challenges, the next slide, please. We need to evolve beyond traditional models towards a new agile cybersecurity model planning and management platform. On this table, we would like to summarize the main differences between the legacy approach and the next generation approach. Uh, in case of example, the question of the budget and the consultant fees. The next generation approach requires scalable and automated solutions. It contributes to the continuous compliance in contrast to a one-time report and snapshot. By integrating self-assessment, in-house resources can be better utilized and budgeting issues can be addressed. We also need to pay attention that today, nowadays, not only the large organizer, uh, organizations and not just a few in industries uh, are affected by the European Union cybersecurity regulations, although the small and medium-sized companies as well. And that's why scalability is crucial, as we highlighted these points on this table as well. And now our solution, the Synomy Virtual CISO platform, it comply with the next generation approach and help our clients succeed in their cybersecurity journey. My colleague Andras Lányi will continue our presentation with a solution overview. And as I previously mentioned, Balázs Csendes will show you the live demonstration. So Andras, the floor is yours and thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Lara. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, my name is Andras Lányi. As Ria uh, said, I'm the Vice President of Sales at uh, Spirity. Uh, before, uh, before we move on, uh, I would like to uh, uh, draw your attention to this QR code. Uh, this QR code is actually leading to our booking uh, platform. So you will be able to, uh, if, you, if you like what you see, you will actually be able to book a, a, a demonstration, a personal demonstration for you. Uh, and at the end of the presentation or the demonstration, you will actually get a two week access uh, to our Synomy solution. So uh, we have 10 slots, so I highly recommend that uh, if you like what you see, you, you apply for our uh, uh, personal presentation. Okay, so uh, as Laura mentioned, uh, you and CISOs and the industry is facing all sorts of different problems and issues regarding cyber security and, uh, and compliance frameworks, for example, NISTU and DORA. Uh, and we really believe that we have a, a, a solution to actually ease your pains or worries. Uh, as, as Laura mentioned, it's called Synomi. Uh, it is actually a cloud-based uh, SaaS platform uh, running on an AWS cloud uh, uh, service in Frankfurt. So if you decide to use our platform, what, what are you actually getting? I mean, you're uh, getting an unlimited uh, user and unlimited access to a very simple uh, solution which uh, which uh, with you can uh, assess, plan, uh, manage uh, your security and compliance activities. And uh, our technology is actually uh, leading you through a simple uh, uh, streamlined and structured process. So you can uh, not just assess, but also re remediate uh, uh, your uh, 
cybersecurity problems and risks and ex exposure. And I think what uh, is the key factor in our solution is that you, uh, you can actually substantially reduce the manual work uh, which is required. Uh, so there are two uh, ways you can actually input uh, data. So what is actually under the hood? You can input data into the system. Uh, uh, so the, the data comes into the system for two sources. One is you as the end user or the client. The other one is actually uh, is included within the system. So uh, the whole process starts, which you will see in the live demonstration, uh, with a guided intuitive questionnaire. Uh, structure it's very simple it's very simple to understand very user friendly uh, and after this uh, self assessment you can run external and internal vulnerability scans on your company or organizations and the whole system will actually generate a very unique cybersecurity profile for your organization uh, at the same time, uh, real-time threat intelligence, uh, industry benchmark data, and standard and compliance frameworks are inputted also into the database. And our proprietary AI engine will uh, compare and uh, match uh, your cybersecurity profile and your to-do things into a whole uh, dashboard, uh, which you will see in our presentation. Uh, what uh, frameworks are already included in the system? Actually, we have right now 20 frameworks, which uh, compliance and uh, security frameworks, which are included in the system. Let me just highlight a few for you. So you can see that uh, we have ISO 2701, 27001, 2013, and 2022 versions. Uh, we have GDPR, NIST 2, DORA, and uh, the newest comer is the NIST 853 framework, uh, which uh, I think uh, uh, we already know uh, uh, in Hungary, for example, the NIST 853 became the local regulation for NIST 2. Uh, you could ask yourself how we know or what, how, how we can actually assume that we know what will be the case in Austria. We do have experts who uh, regularly uh, look at uh, development uh, in, in the regulations of uh, within the European Union. And what we see is that uh, most of the companies, uh, most, most of the countries are not uh, reinventing the wheel. They're actually using one of the larger frameworks to actually implement uh, the NISTU regulation in their own country. So we believe that we have all these frameworks included in the system. So in case, for example, the Austrian law will use the 27,001 uh, 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 framework, then you can actually map uh, your company very easily to the NIST2 and also uh, the, the local regulations. Uh, what else? Uh, so the, the system which you will see, it's very simple. You have the intuitive questionnaires, you have the internal and external scans. Uh, and uh, from this, you will get a personalized cyber profile. And through the AI engine, you will actually get benchmarks. So you can compare your, uh, your organization to the peer industry uh, competitors, how you're matching up to them. And then you can also compare yourself to, to the, uh, uh, you can see how ready you are in a different uh, uh, framework environment. So we are, we are actually examining 35 security domains uh, with the questionnaires. Uh, there are simple questions where you have, uh, you know, a one answer uh, uh, solution, and then you have multiple answer uh, questions, uh, which you can fill out. Uh, they're very understandable. There is an estimated uh, effort time, so it's a very user-friendly little tool that we can provide you with. In case you are already using some vulner vulnerability scanners, you can actually input uh, the data. So you can in it, it is actually integrated, so you can input the data in the system, which will actually, uh, uh, the system will take these uh, input data into consideration when uh, valuing or evaluating uh, your company and your system. Uh, what we think is also a very handy uh, tool or uh, uh, tool or uh, uh, of the of the of the solution is that uh, as Laura mentioned, you don't get only a snapshot of the of of your. So when you have an audit, you get a snapshot. Okay, how am I doing? What 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 is missing? How how am I matching up to the, the compliance frameworks? 
uh, with this system, you can actually continuously monitor uh, your compliance levels, your cybersecurity profile status, status, and you will actually get a very detailed task uh, description and uh, and uh, prioritized on on your criticality. So as you go along, you can actually see how your uh, security posture and your compliance readiness is uh, scaling up. Uh, and we also have, which you will see a surprise, a very, very handy uh, tool in the system is you can actually generate reports uh, with a click of a button. Uh, so if you need to prepare a management report uh, or you need to send reports to people that are not so sophisticated in regards of cybersecurity, you will be able to give them a very quick overview and an update of, of the company's or the organization's security posture. And uh, so again, the QR code. So in case you feel that you already seen uh, enough to register, please do that. Uh, and I'm actually handing it over to Balaj, who will actually do the the, uh, the, the live demonstration for you. And uh, I hope uh, you will have many questions and we'll see you in our personalized demonstrations. Uh, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Balaj Chandash. Uh, uh, as Laura mentioned, I have an engineering background and I'm going to do a short uh, live demonstration how the uh, Synomy virtual CISO platform works. We believe that the beauty of this system is that basically it simplifies the, uh, the you know, usually difficult uh, compliance processes and, uh, and uh, evaluation processes into a very simplified process. Uh, with, uh, so with, by that, the majority of these tasks and evaluations, uh, can be run by the company themselves. So they don't need to hire, you know, external consultants for a long time, but they, the majority of that, they can do it by themselves. But the very first time, uh, we are, you know, logging into the system, uh, we need to onboard our company. And this is what I'm going to show right now. I just created a demo GmbH uh, company, uh, and let me show you how the onboarding works. The onboarding is important because during the onboarding, we are basically preparing and giving some instructions to the system. And based on those uh, information, the system will generate the necessary assessments, what later on I need to fill it out. So let's start the onboarding. It roughly take 10 minutes. It will not gonna take 10 minutes because I run gonna quicker. So first I need to choose my industry, okay? There are many predefined industries, okay? Uh, what I can, you know, uh, select. Let's say that I'm uh, um, uh, manufacturing, okay? Uh, how many computer users I have? Let's say I have uh, between uh, 300 and 500. Who manages uh, my IT, IT systems and the infrastructure? These are multiple choice uh, answers, so I can select um, any combinations. I can say, okay, I have internal, you know, IT stuff, but I'm also using, let's say, many security service provider, and also I'm using an MSP, a managed service provider, to maintain my IT and IT security environment. Uh, as I said, based on this answer, there are several different um, uh, assessment uh, will be generated later, uh, which I need to fulfill. So let's click next. Um, here is where I am able to uh, to select what regulations I'm interested in. It's also a multiple choice. So let's select. Okay, I'm uh, you know let's for example uh, interested in the, uh, NIST the new uh, NIST uh, 853. This is actually the revision five, so the latest one. Uh, let's say I'm also interested in, in ISO 27001, the new version, and also NIST two. And just for the, you know, kind of the demonstration, I can also click Dora, okay? So basically in any combination, uh, I can select frameworks. The, the truth is that I can switch these frameworks on and off, okay? So I can also say that I just do a quick snapshot for PCI DSS for whatever reason, then two minutes later, I switch it off. So it's very easily, I can add opt-in and opt-out for frameworks uh, if I rerun the uh, onboarding framework. Uh, uh, do I maintain uh, on-premise infrastructure? I say yes, both network and servers. Do, do I have an active directory? Yes, I have. Um, uh, do I use an external uh, uh, hosting provider? I, I would also say yes, just for the sake of the demonstration, because it will generate additional assessment. Do I use a cloud provider? I say yes. If yes, 
which are the ones let's say i'm gonna i'm using let's say microsoft azure and aws uh, clicking the next one uh, do i use operational uh, technology infrastructures that was the reason i was selecting manufacturing because likely yes so i'm just you know answering yes here so i'm gonna have more assessments later First to mention that each and every onboarding question I can add note here, okay, for myself or for my team, uh, the system has an unlimited user access, okay, so I can basically give access to anyone uh, inside the company to, to, to use the platform. Can my employee can access my uh, networks and applications remotely? This is after COVID, this is, uh, you know, generally the answer is yes here. Do I use a SaaS product? I say yes. Do I use generative AI? Let's say no. Do I develop a software inside? Let's say yes, just again for the uh, you know, uh, sake of the demonstration. Do I have a website? Yes. Accept Kai payment? Yes. And basically the onboarding is complete, okay? And based on this information, the system will generate the necessary assessment I need to run. The system generated the 34 assessments uh, I need to run through. And as Andras said, during the assessments, okay, basically the platform first will create a cyber profile, okay? Nothing to do with the compliance framework as, you know, as at the very beginning, okay? It basically continuously generate, uh, you know, uh, the gap analysis, okay, uh, from uh, when I'm just doing the assessment. Let's pick some, let's do some demonstration and let's go through. So uh, you can see from the assessment side, uh, from the access active directory asset management awareness up until you know website and web applications okay i have the 34 uh, uh, assessment generated uh, let's pick one uh, let's you know uh, domain and dns each and every time i can see that how many minutes it will you know uh, take me to to answer and run these assessments so let's run domain and dns okay i have a you know kind of like a short description why it is uh, you know important okay a uh, couple of more description you know you know what and what the attackers are doing and why it is important to keep it maintained okay and first step about reg registration do all your domain registrations have current and updated user details for the domain name registration i mean this is, should be yes which of the following information do you have in organization domain register? Backup payment details, backup contact details, I don't know or none. Okay, let's say I'm pretty advanced, so let's click backup. I also have backup payment and of course backup contact details. This is basically to avoid, you know, uh, domain hijacking. Okay, so this is, uh, it's absolutely crucial to have this done uh, in case of, a, you know, failed payment. Uh, do you have a process to periodically check domain renewal time and removing obsolete ones? I say, let's say, I don't know. Uh, do you have an enforce MFA multi-factor authentication to the domain name account? Okay, this is nice to have, yes. I'm gonna say yes. Domain lock prevents attackers from transferring your domain to another domain. Did you amend a domain lock to all your domain names? I said, let's say no, just for the sake of information. Okay, I'm gonna have a couple of more, uh, you know, questions based on the answer, uh, you know, I just gave to the system. Have you enabled DNSSEC for this domain? I say yes. Does the organization use both primary and secondary DNS servers to ensure redundancy? I say no, just for the sake of, you know, trial. Do you use well-known public DNS resolvers? I say yes. Um, and a couple of more questions. I'm not going to go into the very details uh, because I want to also show you a couple of more, but I'm kind of like, you know, getting to the end. Okay. Uh, and the questionnaire is submitted. So I'm submitting it. Okay. One, actually now two questions has been uh, answered and I'm going to switch to the dashboard now for a second and switch it back because on the dashboard, this is where I can see that how I'm completing, okay, on my journey, you know, planning and assessment. The system will generate a posture score is kind of like a generic from zero to 10 posture score. How am I good at in terms of, you know, cybersecurity? I can also see a monthly trend. Okay, it's, I just started, so actually nothing happened. Like just like a kind of like I can see the history, what assessment has been, uh, you know, uh, run. I can also see immediately uh, the compliance, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, com completion, okay? 
uh, you know, you remember that I selected NIST 853, DORA, ISO, and NIST, okay? These are zero, but in the NIST, this is actually the most rigid one. Uh, I have 2% completed. Uh, and I also see a score profile, okay? Uh, when I'm gonna add more and more assessment, you're gonna see that each of the domain has a scoring uh, from one to 10, uh, and I can see which is under the target. So uh, uh, the gray line is kind of showing me where I should be, kind of like the target level, and the blue showing me my current level. So my current level is uh, 7.6, my target is nine. Okay, so there are room for improvement, but I'm, I'm gonna see this uh, all the way down and for all the different domains. And you can also see that right after I submitted the first questionnaire, the system generated certain tasks for me. Okay, so uh, based on criticality, there are critical, high, medium, and low severity. Up until, you know, I was just finishing this one, I have one high criticality, and the two medium criticality task has been generated. And this is what is generating real time uh, during the system. Let me switch to another one, uh, you know, just to show you some another examples. Uh, let's pick the hosted, uh, hosted uh, network. Uh, this is also quite straightforward and not too, uh, you know, long to fill. So hosted network, we all know what it is, okay. Uh, gonna also take me to a couple of questions. Our internet facing fire was being used to protect company hosted network. Of course we have. This is, uh, it is very important that all the questions and all the technical, but it also related to the policy related questions, the platform will give options to answer, okay. So I don't need to kind of, you know, pre-fill, uh, you know, free text, uh, you know, uh, you know, answers, but I need to, uh, select all the technologies which is used by my company at my hosted network. Like only necessary ports are exposed, fire, vault hardened, regularly patched, logs are different, you know, so, and so forth. So I'm gonna, I'm able to select all the, you know, un proper answers or okay, proper technology, okay, uh, to ensure that, okay, this is one. It's not necessarily needed, okay, for certain, you know, uh, technology or certain cybersecurity frameworks. We will see that later. I just need to answer it properly, okay, and basically not to lie to the system. So let's click on next. Uh, please select other network protection used by your company on your hosted network. Okay, like network segmentation I have, net I have, uh, and let's say I have, uh, you know, switches uh, configuration hardening, let's say, in place. Go to next. Uh, has the company adopted zero trust network access? Let's say I say no. Okay, are there dedicated workstation and network segments assigned for administrative tasks? Let's say, I don't know. Okay, in remote connectivity, uh, company allowing in such case teleworking, for I'd say yes. Uh, and just a couple of more by what means the company network can be remotely connected to user accounts using RDP, VPN, multi-factor. Let's say I'm gonna have, have VPN and an MFA in place and click on the next one. Is there a procedure to ensure secure network infrastructure management? Let's say, I don't know. And a couple of, just maybe one more, uh, multiple physical site, okay. Fire was, and the questionnaire is completed. So I'm submitting this one as well, okay. And you can see this pop up that my score immediately went uh, from 0 0.25 to 0 0.42. I can also check it on my dashboard. So it's kind of like real time growing. And it's also seen that in terms of DORA, ISO or NIST2, I have, you know, certain questions already completed. So my competition level was, uh, was uh, increasing. Let me just show you uh, a last one. Then I'm gonna switch to uh, another uh, tenant when I can, uh, you know, show you uh, what is happening if I'm just feeling all through the, uh, uh, all the, um, assessment. So let's pick the asset management because asset management contains a lot of policy driven uh, questions. Asset management, we know the topic, why it is important to identify assets and who, what is holding critical data, who is responsible for those assets and a lot of other things the asset management covers. Are the company assets identified and inventoried? The, oh, so I can say yes, no, partially, I don't know. I say, let's say yes. Are assets documented with the level of sensitivity of the data they store, process, or transmit? Let's say yes. 
uh, our assets documented with the business services they support. Mm, let's say, mm, okay, no, this is not true. Is asset inventory updated? Uh, let's say yes. Uh, are assets automatically identified using discovery tools? Let's say partially. Uh, does the company uh, label media containing sensitive information? Let's say yes. Uh, and so forth. So I'm not going to go and read all the ones, but this is actually the process I need to go through and kind of like answering questions about the policy or policies, which is around, uh, you know, managing uh, uh, or, you know, around the asset management policy uh, part of, uh, of, the, uh, of the frameworks. Okay, so I'm going to just click through uh, and answer like yes and no. Okay um assets handled okay and again a multiple choice uh question uh is media destroyed or it's sanitized let's say yes shredded yes we are shredding the paper electronic media wiped does the company review and update policies on procedures or annual basis let's say yes this one is interesting because later on you will see that i am able to generate recurring tasks as well so i'm gonna submit this one and uh, and my score actually went up from 0 0.42 to 0 0.7 which is also visible on the dashboard on the dashboard i can see you know at this time you know what are the different you know assessment i did and what is happening that after i'm just you know filling up this assessment i'm gonna have task generated okay uh, the system will actually generate all the tasks which has been so-called fulfilled, okay, like this one, categorizing hardware and system assets, because during the assessment, I said that, yes, it's in place, okay. However, I can filter to the uh, to the status, like, you know, not started, which are kind of like new task to be done, okay. And here I'm going to have, uh, you know, a complete list of what are the tasks that needs to be done with a you know uh with the name uh watch but policy okay this uh, this task is actually related what is the status who is the owner and so forth if i'm going and click to the to see the details this is very this is where it's got very very exciting because all the tasks i'm gonna have a description and the best practice is how to okay so uh when i'm assigning to this task to anyone anyone into my organization it's very important there are no limits in terms of defining users i can name internally or external uh you know uh, experts to to assign to a task i can assign this task to him giving to him an access and they can do and run this task to complete uh, uh, with a due date of course uh, i can also you know uh, creating you know short mid and long term plans what is also important that when th this colleague of mine will receive this task to be done, uh, they can see exactly and they can actually attach the evidences uh, to this task. Okay, it can be a text or can be a file, can be a screen share and so forth, and also with a validation date. So I can very easily go through if an auditor comes. Okay, here is my policy. Here are the different frameworks and do the framework. These are the requirements and these are the evidences next to each and every requirement of that specific framework. I can also see from each and every task that which, you know, related compliance it is. In this case, this is the NIST 853. And I can also see the, uh, the explicit control uh, which this, uh, you know, task is related to. I can also set it to repeat, repeating task uh, uh, if I want to. So let's say every year. Uh, or every second year this task can pop up and can generate and go back to not started so someone who is assigned they need to do and you know upload the fresh evidences to here uh, and let me now switch to uh, another uh, tenant which is it's called ECME which is of course another demo company uh, here in this case uh, we actually fulfill if I'm clicking on the assessment you're gonna see that all the assessments has been uh, completed this is a different one, uh, uh, so you, you you can see that uh, we have a 30 um, uh, assessment uh, run. Uh, in my other demonstration, we had uh, 34. So when I'm you know doing and running the onboarding assessment, uh, you know it will uh, 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 modify the 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 different the number of assessments I need to run later. So I'm just going back to the dashboard uh the posture score we just discussed uh this is kind of like a you know how my company security posture uh is on what stage uh on what scale i can also see the compliance level 
I can also, as Andreas said, uh, I can run scans, okay, uh, or run or import uh, vulnerability scan data. Some of the frameworks actually requires uh, to run so. So if I'm having, uh, you know, and I can run, you know, uh, scans, um, I'm not going to run a scan right now, just showing you the possibility. But Signum has a built in scanner, built in vulnerability scanner. So I can run external scanners and I can also run internal scanners. The internal scanners are just for Windows devices. But if I have Nessus, Microsoft Score, Qualys, Cavelo, uh, I can import the data uh, uh, coming from those systems. Um, a couple of months later, this will be integrated. So the Synomy can actually pull in the data automatically from these scanners. So anyway, uh, the, the basically the scanner results will also, at the end of the day, it will be uh, ended up in task. Okay, so like this one, managing network communication ports. Okay, uh, here is a task. Okay, this is a crucial task. Uh, in many compliances, it's there. That's why it has a bit more uh you know a detailed description a description about the how to list of risky ports and so forth so there are the best practices written uh, and also related compliances with their you know actual control exact control number okay that where it is actually um uh you know uh, controlled um <clears throat> Meanwhile, I can also switch to the policy. So I also have a policy view. In the policy view, all the questionnaires are basically policies, and uh, the system will score my policy one to one. Okay, so in this demo, uh, let's say I have the uh, Active Directory policy. Let's say I can view the policy. This is not so difficult policy. Uh, I can see the purpose, the scope, and the requirements one by one. Each and every requirement will link to a task. Okay, like in this one audit and maintain all user accounts and group memberships. So if I, this is actually done, so kind of like with this green check, box, check mark, uh, it is done. So I can go and see or link to the actual task, okay, uh, which is, uh, 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 you know, generated by the system. Currently it's fulfilled because it's done, uh, but, uh, uh, but this is how the policies and the requirements and the task are linked to each other. It's also important that, uh, for example, I can also change the severity, okay, uh, of the task if I, you know, uh, you know, feel so, okay. So based on uh, my judgment or the, the the user judgment, they can change the criticality from critical. This is actually a low one, but I can actually raise and also lower this criticality. So for the uh, the posture score, uh, you know, percentage will change uh, according to this one. Last but not least, it is also important that I can select the compliance view. Okay, so up until we did, we did the onboarding, we run the, uh, you know, several assessments. It's worth to mention that these assessments, assessments, I'm time to time changing. Usually, uh, uh, the same platform is actually adding more and more questions. Okay, uh, so the assessments can change, okay, as the technology are changing. Uh, those assessment can change and it can actually pop up additional questions. So I can see the compliance view in these demonstrations. We selected cyber essentials, uh, the, the old and the new ISO, NIST 2 and the NIST 853. Okay, so if I'm selecting, let's say ISO, okay, I'm clicking on this one. I can see a very detailed view. Where am I actually, uh, you know, uh, staying uh, with, uh, with, the, uh, with the new uh, ISO 27001? Uh, in terms of control status, what is the not implemented, partially implemented, fully implemented, and the not applicable, different domains, control type, and so forth. Uh, and uh, if I want to, uh, I can also generate very nice reports. Okay, uh, okay, it's we're not going to see the report, but I can see uh, a very detailed report uh, which can be used for like you know uh, management reporting and so forth. Uh, it's going to do uh, a PDF report at the end. What is also now it's actually just downloaded. Uh, what is actually also important that I can also view the whole control status based on the basically the text, okay, of that actual framework. So let's pick the most difficult one. This is the NIST uh, 853, okay. So I can see the controls, okay, uh, from uh, you know AC1, AC2, and so forth, kind of like uh, with all the tasks which is related, okay, to that specific control, okay. And I can also see that which is fulfilled, you know, not fulfilled or started. Okay. 
it has almost 300 entries okay uh, so pretty much long uh, and I can also go through on that list if I'm gonna click on basically I'm going through in that view okay I can see you know like for example device lock uh, locking out user accounts after a period of inactivity this is fulfilled but if I'm click here I also end up at the actual task okay which contains a description and I mean, in better cases, it also contains the evidences, okay, what the auditors will actually check for, okay, uh, uh, you know, the existence of the evidences. So we believe that, you know, using this tool, not just simplifying the, uh, the process of evaluating the company against any framework or multiple frameworks at a time, um, but also helps uh, the company during the audits, okay, when the auditor comes, okay, uh, because it has a view, uh, you know, based on the controls, so the auditor can go through from one to the three hundred and go it and you know list one by one. If for whatever reason, let's say the Austrian, uh, you know, upcoming regulation will differ, okay, for this one, I can very easily say that, okay, that like for example, identifying issues affecting cybersecurity policy, okay, I can say not applicable. So basically, I can filter out not applicable, uh, you know, uh, controls, okay, and tasks uh, from these frameworks, okay, and I can end up to, you know, a company specific, uh, you know, uh, requirement and task list, which applicable to my company, and also fulfills the, uh, the, uh, the regulation of, uh, uh, of Austria. Okay. Um, um, it's also worth to mention that it's very easy to to add up users. So as I said, the number of users are unlimited. Uh, uh, I can uh, invite uh, any users uh, into the uh, the platform, uh, giving them a specific role like company admin, editor, viewer, or assessor, uh, and they're gonna get an invitation email. And using the invitation email, setting up an MFA. Uh, they are able to log in and with their specific, uh, you know, uh, rights, they can do and run necessary assessments or, you know, can edit and execute tasks and uploading the, uh, the, uh, the evidences. Um, and just one, uh, uh, there is also just back to the, uh, you know, framework. Uh, here I can also generate a security report, which is a global very nice uh, crafted security report i can also uh downloading it in a doc or pdf format as well so i can use the output of that report to uh in my you know management report and so forth but in general the dashboard gives the users and the management basically a day-to-day -day view uh how the company uh, security journey is uh, you know running and how they are fulfilling the different requirements how far they are, far they are from the compliance regulations okay and what are the uh, what are the areas or domains that need to be enhanced this is a pretty much good use case that if i'm selecting let's say the under target and let's say about data leak okay uh, so this is a specific use case it's showing me this graph showing me uh, those areas which i'm lagging from the benchmark okay so in this case you know, the, the blue line shows my score. So for example, in this case, the hosted server, I have a score of 4.8. My target should be 7.9. Okay, so there are room for improvement for my company. So it can also give your company a, a good benchmarking to that what are the areas that you need to enhance and uh, to maybe, you know, implement new policies or systems or whatsoever. So in this case, this the service, uh, uh, the hosted server uh, and the compliant domain and DNS are the areas which are lagging uh, from my benchmark number that I should address. And this is also could be used as a good justification towards the management when applying budget for the next year's development. So uh, I think this is it. Uh, uh, I think we still have time to answer a couple of questions. I was just seeing that there are some questions popped up and uh, we are happy to, to answer these questions. Laura, uh, can you? Uh... Yes, of course. So thank you for the questions. 
The first one is, uh, do you use the uploaded scans and data to train your AI model that is used for other customers? Uh, we are not using uh, uh, your data to train uh, the system, okay? These are coming from uh, industry benchmark and the threat intelligence data sets. So we are not using your data to anything. It's purely yours. And we are not even for training and even for sharing, of course. Uh, this is fully yours. So no, the answer is no. We are not training with your data to anything. Definitely no. not. Okay. It's not public. It's not public. No, it's not public. No, it is coming from set intelligence data. Definitely mm -hmm. not your data, not even for training. Okay. Second one, is there an integration with Jira? Uh, not yet. It's coming in Q1 next year. Uh, not just Jira, but basically a full API exposed. Okay. Uh, in next year, Q1, uh, the full API will be exposed. So currently not. Uh, it's an internal you know, task management system. Next year, Q1, uh, the integration will be done with the you know top three or top four uh, uh, you know ticketing system like Jira, uh, but also enables us to uh, to uh, to do any other kind of information you know sharing or you know bi-directional integration. So not yet, but coming in Q1 next year. What kind of resources can be scanned using your integrated scanner? Yes. Uh, there is a detailed list uh, in uh, the, uh, the external scanner is, uh, uh, you know, pretty uh, wide. You're kind of like scanning the, uh, the, of course, the IPs, the URLs, the, the, the SSL certificates uh, and so forth. The internal scan, okay, uh, which is included and, and, and comes with the platform as a free add-on. It scans the Windows uh, network and the Windows settings, okay, and the, uh, and the GPO and the AD, uh, AD directory settings, okay? So it's I would, it's not suitable for scanning your Linux or you know Cisco network accessories. You need to use your own scanner or Nessus or Cavalo or Qualys to do that. Uh, but for generic windows and the, the domain settings, it is able to scan as an included one for free. Can you also directly validate the configuration of tools, software? Uh, not by the tool, okay? So meaning that the, the configuration checking, uh, it's, I mean, the internal scanner is, does some checking, okay? For example, in terms of active directory, okay? Uh, but in generic answer is no. So meaning that if you have whatever software or, you know, firewall settings, uh, the system will not, you know, check it automatically. It will just generate a task which someone needs to do and fulfill, but we will not do the check. It will. It only can do for uh, a generic Active Directory, uh, GPU and group settings. Okay, it does, but in, in a broad scale, the answer is no. It just generates a task and someone needs to fulfill and that, that, and, and make this uh, you know, uh, check done manually or with other two. Okay, can it be used on several companies? The answer is definitely yes. Uh, my screen is not shared, but basically you can, uh, you know, uh, you know, select, uh, uh, you know, or you know, create any number of domains. In my demonstration, I was also using two separate domains. Okay, uh, first to mention that all data is uh, handled and stored in Frankfurt in the AWS in Frankfurt. Okay, so nothing is leaving uh, the, the European Union or actually the AWS tenant of Frank uh, of Frankfurt. Uh, uh, and definitely, uh, this is a multi-tenant solution. Uh, so, so for MSSP providers, okay, who are maybe managing multiple clients, they're gonna have a separate tenant, okay. And from a combo box, they can select, you know, any number of, uh, you know, company that they are working for, okay. So the answer is yes, it's fully multi-tenant. And if can, if case you are an MSSP, you're gonna have a separate tenant, and you can list all your partners or companies or clients and you can handle them separately. And you can also give access to your clients separately. So kind of like a multi-tenant uh, operation mode. Next question. Can I also implement an organization structure with various entities, maybe even with different compliance requirements? The answer is definitely yes. So uh, 
when I'm uh, if if I if for example if I'm an MSSP or an MSP as a, you know a service provider company, I can you know as I said we can define any number of clients or vendors or or, 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 or third parties okay that uh, that we are assessing, and each and every uh, company that I'm defining, uh, it's totally different meaning that they have a separate compliance frameworks, of course separate assessments, so nothing in common. Uh, it's not visible on the screen, but I can select and choose any of them. Uh, and uh, of course, the compliance frameworks are totally different, nothing to do with each other. Okay. And now our favorite question as salesperson is, what's your licensing model, price model? <laughs> uh, okay. So the license is pretty straightforward and easy. Uh, uh, basically, the license is based on tiers. And the tiers are basically linked to the number of employees the company has, um, and uh, and in that in every tier uh, the license fee is uh, it's flat. And you know, no matter how many users you define, no matter how many uh, you know uh, regulation frameworks you are opted in, okay, it's still the same. Uh, uh, the the good thing that the uh, these tiers are kind of like close to each other. So like call it European tiers, not like US tiers, because in the US, every tier starts at, you know, 1,000 or, I don't know, 5,000 employees. So these are, let's say, Central European tiers, which means that the first tier is from zero to 50 employees, the second one from 50 to 100, and the other one from 100 to 250. Okay, and this is how it, uh, this is how it goes. So pretty, uh, you know, small tiers, okay. We have, I don't know, 20 tiers, and there is a price tag uh, which is kind of like, you know, flat uh, and with unlimited usage. And yeah, and also it's worth, worth to mention that the that that the that every tier is basically as in that terms is a SaaS product, so it has basically a one year fee, okay, for for using the SaaS product. So there is a one year fee associated with each and every tier. That's why I mentioned in the very beginning that our solution is very scalable. That's, that's crucial in our European environment. The next one is, uh, does the tool for organizations with various entities also consolidate scores and maturity? For example, uh, global regions, different regions, something like that. Yeah, uh, the answer is not yet. Uh, it's actually coming in queue for this year. Uh, uh, it was not visible, but uh, but MSPs and large organizations who might have different entities, they're gonna have a dashboard view, and on the dashboard there are uh, you know cumulative view of the different organizations in one. So, for example, if there is a one large entity having subsidiaries in I don't know A, B, C, D, E, F, G countries, they can define their own uh, you know uh, frameworks for each and every subsidiary, but still they're gonna have a dashboard view. Okay, to, to kind of like a cumulative view uh, for their tenants. And it's also true for MSPs. So meaning that MSPs can also have one, you know, uh, you know, a large view uh, showing the cumulative view of all the tenants or all the accounts they have. All right, one more. Just let me add one little uh, item to this that uh, you can actually set uh, standard operating procedures within your tenants. So in case you uh, uh, have, I don't know, 10, 15 subsidiaries in your tenant, then you can actually uh, set up a, a standardized uh, operating procedure for the for, for all of the participants. Yes. And just for just back to the price, uh, just to give you a hint that this is not a uh, uh, some super size solution. So from the initial price, uh, the you know, the basic price, the platform only price for a company from zero to 50 uh, it cost uh, uh, less than four thousand euro per year okay so it's actually three thousand eight you know three thousand eight hundred some fifty if i remember correctly so less than four thousand euro per year with unlimited access unlimited usage for a company less having less than 50 employees just to give you a magnitude okay that we are that that's the that's the price, and you know there is a small increase as we are going up to the tiers, but this is starts uh, you know uh, below four uh, k euro per year with unlimited usage and access. 
Yeah, exactly. That was the next question. That uh, could we give a concrete price for a company with 500 employees or 5,000 employees? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I don't know it by heart. You know, I, this is why I'm saying I know this is the initial price. Uh, but uh, but of course we can give or Andras can check on this and uh, you know we can say for a number for uh, uh, for with the employees with uh, with 500. Andras, can and you take a look on the 500? And of course, we are happy to discuss it separately during the <laughs> <laughs> a session. Yeah. You just yeah, you can you can actually you can actually use the QR code, and we will actually give you a, an official quote uh, on the on the private uh, or the personal event. Uh, actually, the the actual price is three thousand eight hundred euros per per year, so that's the below fifty. Uh, and I think uh, we had uh, yesterday a meeting, Polaj. Uh, it was between 3,001, I think, and 4,000, and the total uh, uh, license fee was uh, uh, 20, 20,000 euros, I think. Yes. Yes. Yeah, exactly. I cannot check it because I don't want to yeah, yeah. mess around with my computer because I lose yeah, yeah. the webinar. <laughs> yes. It was a, it was a company uh, between 3,000 and 5,000. Okay, so meaning five thousand, and the 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 unlimited price was a twenty k per year to twenty something, but twenty, basically less than twenty one. I would. Yeah, that that was practically all the subsidiaries within the European Union, and they were actually discussing that it would be a good idea to have a uh, a corporate solution, so they don't have to play, or, and and they can actually because they had a service center. Uh, regarding security and IT, so every every uh, operation procedure operations procedure was standardized. So they would only have to fill out the assessment once, and then uh, they can just map, map uh, the compliance frameworks to the uh, uh, to the local subsidiary. You know, if uh, let's say in Austria it's ISO 27001, in Hungary it's NIST. Uh, 800-53, then uh, you just have to adjust and map the, 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 the assessment and the results to the local regulations. Okay, at the moment I can't see any more new questions in the chat. We still have a couple of more minutes if you would like to ask something from us or as we already mentioned that we are happy to set up a separate call with you if you can scan our QR code. And we can set up uh, the limited number of uh, demo accounts for you so you can play around with the system and experience the, the greatness of the system o o on your own. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, one more. Just just popping up. Can the documents can be updated automatically, for example, from Google Drive? Yes, uh, I mean, uh, you can also attach a link, okay? So there are actually three ways to attach evidences, text, uh, attaching a file, uh, or attaching a link, for example, from a Google Drive or OneDrive or something else. There are three ways to, to add uh, evidences or standard operating procedures also. So anything which is, or anything in the notes. Okay, so yes, the answer is yes. Okay, great. All right. All right. Claudia, I think we're done. <laughs> yeah, I thank, think thank, so. Thank, 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 <laughs> thank you, thank you for having us, and uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun for us. Yes. Thank you for uh, thank you to participants for for a lot of questions. So it's a very interesting topic. But anyhow, we send all the information to all the participants. We send the video and we send you contact details and the QR code, so everybody can get in touch with you. Everybody can get the information they need. So thanks a lot for the very interesting webinar. Um, Thanks to the participants for being uh, with us today. Um, this is just kind of a, a quick advertisement uh, of our on-site events. Uh, the upcoming in October, we have one in, in the west of Austria, in Rankweil, in Vorarlberg, uh, one in Vienna on October 9th, and then in Salzburg on November 19th. So we are, we are uh, happy to see you there. And well, yeah, thank you very much for the nice webinar. So have a nice uh, noon. A nice lunch break and see you next time. Thanks from Vienna. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Mahlzeit, Mahlzeit, Mahlzeit. Mahlzeit. Thank you. Genau. Mahlzeit. Mahlzeit. <laughs> Schönen Nachmittag. Bis bald. Ja. Tschüss. Tschüss. Danke.